Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. I don't like the exposure triangle. It's always difficult trying to teach someone about exposure using the exposure triangle. In this video, I'm going to talk about that and something that I came up with that I think is better. Whenever I teach someone new to photography exposure, whenever I talk about the exposure triangle, I found it really just confuses them. So I found it better to just explain exposure without talking about the exposure triangle. And a few years ago, I read an article on Petapixel by Matthew Miller, and I'm going to reference that article now, and I'll have a link to it in the description below the video. And what he's saying is the art in the article is exactly what I feel. There really isn't a qualitative or quantitative relationship between a triangle and the three factors of exposure, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Outside of a triangle having three sides and three angles, and you have those three different uh, things that take care of exposure or concern exposure, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Other than that, there really isn't a, a qual even a qualitative relationship. If you increase shutter speed and you make, let's say, one of the sides longer, there really isn't a correct uh, correlation to what happens to the other two sides that really happen inside of a camera to get a balanced exposure. So I've tried to come up with another visual way to express exposure. And what I call it is the exposure pie. With the exposure pie, what you'll have is the three factors, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, expressed as three different slices of pie. When you look at this now, this is a shutter speed of 1 500th of a second, and you can see there's a green slice of pie in there. If we let more light in, so I decrease the shutter speed to 1 250th of a second, we get a bigger slice of pie. So more light is coming in, we have a bigger slice of pie. When we're talking about aperture, let's say we have an f-stop at 8.0, and you can see there's a red slice of pie for aperture. That is whatever f-stop 8.0 lets, amount of light it lets in, it's that slice of pie. If I want to let more light in, I need a bigger aperture. So if I go to f of 5.6, which lets in twice as much light as f of 8.0, I have a slice of pie that's twice as big. The last factor is ISO. With ISO, let's say I have an ISO 100, but that is the gain of the sensor. So the, uh, a lot of people talk about it as the sensitivity of the sensor that technically isn't correct. But if you want to make that argument, you could say it's the sensitivity of the sensor. The actual gain of the sensor, let's say at ISO 100, is represented by that blue slice of pie. If you go to a higher ISO, you're going to get a bigger slice of pie. So there's ISO 200. Now when you put this all together, you'll come up with something like this. You have an f-stop of 4.0. You can see that's the red slice of pie. An ISO of 200, that's the blue slice of pie. Now we need a shutter speed that's going to completely fill in the rest of the pie. So all this gray area has to be our shutter speed. And if you come up with it, you could see there in green, we have 1 60th of a second. So that is a balanced exposure. We have a full pie with three different slices that completely fill the pie. Now, let's say, for example, that we're going to change one of these factors. In this next slide, I take a larger aperture, f2.8. So I'm letting more light in. So I'm getting a bigger slice of pie. So because more light is coming in the aperture, either the ISO or the shutter speed or both have to become smaller, a smaller slice of pie. And you can see in this case, the shutter speed is now 1 125th of a second. It's a faster shutter speed letting in less light. We're letting in more light with the aperture, less light in with the shutter. And you could see now that we have a balanced pie. It's every bit as a correct exposure as this F4 ISO 200 
1 60th of a second is, it's just we have different factors. We have a, a larger aperture, more light coming in there. We're using a faster shutter speed, less light coming in there. Now what if we want to use an f-stop, a 1.4? We want really shallow depth of field, so we're at f of 1.4. Well, either ISO or shutter speed or both slices have to become smaller. In this case, they both became smaller. We have ISO 100, a shutter speed of 1 500th of a second. Well, what about the other way? What if we want to stop down and we want an aperture of, let's say, f16? Well, in that case, that's going to give us a less light coming in, so we're going to have a smaller slice of pie for aperture. So either ISO, shutter speed, or both have to get bigger. And you can see here now we have an f-stop of 16. The, the slice, of pie, slice of pie is now much smaller than it was at f of 1.4. But the other two, ISO went up and shutter speed went up. So I think this is at the very least a better qualitative representation of those three different factors, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, than the exposure triangle. And from now on, when I teach exposure, I'm going to use the exposure pi. If you're interested in reading a little bit more where I explain it maybe a little better than I did in this video, in the description below the video I'll have a link to my website where I'll have it written out a little bit better and you can hopefully better understand the relationship of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO and how I visually represent that using the pi. Now it's not a perfect quantitative representation and I make no claim that it is but I do make the claim that I believe it's a better qualitative representation than the exposure triangle. If you could do me a favor, if you like this video, click the like button, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit that little bell so you get updates, and follow me on Instagram. I am at Anthony Morganti on Instagram. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.